Seeing is believing, and believing is sacrificing your family to a dark man with the head of a beetle. Welcome to Night Vale. Good morning, listeners. Sorry this isn't the voice you're used to. This is Intern Sky. Cecil is out on vacation, so I'm taking care of the show for the time being. Now, I know our Cecil is something of a celebrity here in Night Vale, but please, try not to scream that you love him, or ask him for autographs, or give him any salamanders. Mr. Baldwin is a very busy man, and this is his time to get away from his job, so we should really just let him relax. I must say, it is very exciting getting to work here at the station. It does take up a lot of time, and as an intern I do not get paid, but it is definitely worth it. The college credits are nice, but the real reward is the experience. Learning is fine and all, but there's nothing that can replace real, actual action. Getting the coffee for Cecil, researching for him when it's needed, taking the radio equipment on its daily walks. It's all very, very exciting. This just in, word is that a mysterious door has suddenly appeared right in the middle of Janus Drive. Traffic has been somewhat impeded by the newly materialized portal, and a bright red sedan has crashed in the owner's attempt to swerve out of the way of the door. It is dark, most likely wooden, painted black with a slight golden finish. It does not appear attached to a door frame or building of any kind, although they could just be invisible and intangible. That's always a possibility, but for now, let's just assume that it is, in fact, standing upright, unsupported, and seemingly leading nowhere. In city news, Night Vale is getting a museum. Yes, we know there's already the Museum of Forbidden Technologies, but considering that every single one of the numerous exhibits in the museum are covered in thick, burlap coverings at all times. I for one am glad that the city council has voted to spend several thousand dollars founding a new museum dedicated to the city council. Oh, won't that be interesting. An update on the door that mysteriously appeared right in the middle of Janus Drive. It appears that local fireman and dog lover Brent Raleigh has attempted to open the door. How he expected it to open is unknown, seeing as it has no door frame or hinges from which to swing, but swing it did. As soon as Raleigh touched the handle of the door, witnesses report that he became luminescent, glowing a faint red light. Although others tried to stop him, it seems that he somehow managed to open the door and walk through it. Although nothing remains on the other side of the door, except for the car wreck on Janus Drive, it appears that Raleigh is now nowhere to be found. More on this as it occurs. Let's take a look at the community calendar. Friday, there will be a conversation you will then forget. There will be a death. And no one will remember this death. And no one will remember the person that died. But all will mourn. All but one, that is. Saturday, the stars will align. An ancient prophecy will be fulfilled. Unfortunately, I am merely an intern and have not been told which prophecy. Hopefully, one of the good ones. Sunday has been rescheduled for Tuesday. Sorry for any trouble this may cause. And Monday is Howling Day. Don't forget to celebrate by wearing your favorite bloody pelt and howling your favorite howl up, up, up into the blue noonday sky. Oh, I don't know about you, but I just love Howling Day. Alert. This just in. A woman known as Alyssa Lewis was just arrested by the sheriff's secret police. Lewis is a very well-known mastermind criminal and cunning thief. She has long been the head of a very skilled and elusive criminal network, stealing from the Night Vale Community Credit Union and several smaller, family-owned lizard banks as well. She was found today having been stabbed and abandoned in one of the many screeching holes in the Cactus Bloom housing development. She was handcuffed, 
arrested and is now being held in custody under charges of unlicensed death. Another update on the door in Janus Drive. The door has opened once more. This time, however, it was not by anyone on our side. The knob turned. The crowd that has grown to surround the door gasped as one, as the door slowly, slowly, oh, so slowly, creaked open. A strange, luminous red light burst through the crack of the door standing ajar, blinding all who were watching. They covered their eyes, crying out in pain as their retinas were scorched. And then they could see. And the door stood closed. More on this story as it develops, but for now, let's go to the weather. What you think, what you think, alone, late at night, late at night, when no one's at home, you're all alone, you're so alone. Well, listeners, it would seem that the, well, the whatever it is that passed through the door is covering its tracks very skillfully. That, or it may just be that whatever it is, is somehow, in some alien way, unable to be detected. Despite the best efforts of our sheriff's secret police, the thing, whatever it may be, has not been found. Police are now searching for whatever, whoever, has passed through the door and is now hiding, somewhere, here in Nightvale. But we here at the station ask you, listeners, we implore you even, search on your own. We must find whatever unknown danger has invaded our town of Nightvale and stamp it out. We must ask ourselves whether it is worth it to do nothing, to sit by and let a foreign, other danger encroach into Nightvale. It is our city, or as near to ours as anything can be when ruled by a mysterious, reclusive consortium of Lizard Kings, and it is ours to defend. It is ours to love, and to cherish, and to fight to protect. Yes, it is dangerous, going and searching for a mysterious being that may or may not be able to be detected or even really exist. Yes, it is scary, acting on your own, and you will want a guide. Remember, though, that I am no one special. I am only an intern, speaking into a microphone, telling you what I know. I know only as much as you do. And I know that you will do good. Good night, Night Vale. Good night. This video was a fan episode of the podcast Welcome to Night Vale. Written by Jeffrey Craner and Joseph Fink, and produced by Commonplace Books. Today's Weather Was Night by Andrew Privat. Background music was by Disparition, Atom, and Kevin McLeod. This video was made in the intent of celebrating and promoting Welcome to Night Vale, and is entirely fan-made. Today's Proverb 
Two heads may be better than one, but what about twelve? Are twelve heads better than one? You tell us.